Good evening, Oswego, and welcome to WTOP 10 Tuesday Night News, your connection to Oswego and beyond. I'm Travis Clark. And I'm Heather Casey. Today is December 4th, 2012, and this is your news, sports, and weather all before the first commercial break. Let's take a look at your top stories. 10 News starts now. Iran has supposedly taken possession of a U.S. drone, but the U.S. Navy in the area shot down this claim and said that none of its spy planes had gone missing. The report does not indicate how or where the drone was captured, only that the aircraft had been on a mission for a few days. According to the naval arm of the Iranian Revolutionary Guards, the drone was gathering intel and captured as soon as it entered Iranian airspace. Netflix subscribers can look forward to seeing Disney's new releases starting in 2016. Walt Disney Studios closed a deal with the movie streaming company and will eventually move to feature films from Walt Disney Animation Studios, Pixar Animation Studios, Marvel Studios, and Disney Nature. This will make Netflix the only subscription service with access to the company's productions, which will end Star's licensing deal with Disney along with other streaming services like Amazon Prime. Now we'll check our current conditions outside or inside, sorry, with meteorologist Ryan Farrow. What's it looking like out there, Ryan? Thanks, guys. Well, outside right now, we currently have a temperature of 49 degrees. And thankfully, I am inside because here is our radar. We are right in the middle of a large line of storms. Now, this is going to continue overnight, but the bulk of these showers will be in our region before midnight. Now, more about, more about that coming up in my full forecast, but for now, back to the desk. Thanks, Ryan. North Carolina police have found the location of a vehicle belonging to missing person El Elizabeth Stonger. An unidentified body was found in the vehicle that matches Stonger's description, including the clothes she was last seen wearing. But again, the body has not yet been identified. Investigators have been looking for Stonger since she went missing in October. At the time Stonger was reported missing, police believed her to be driving a 1998 Chevy Lumina, and the vehicle found was just that. Police came across the vehicle when looking into an illegal dumping call. The Assumption Food Pantry on Syracuse's north side was in dire straits and expected not to be able to help out the hundreds of families it serves every year, but that changed this morning. After hearing about the pantry struggle on the news, local car deal dealer Billy Pusillo and his son Billy Jr. made a donation of $50,000. They are also encouraging Central New Yorkers to match their donation. CNY Central is partnering with the Fusillos to help the Church of the Assumption feed the 900 families they feed each holiday season. The Red Cross is holding blood drives on campus all this week. Alexis Trickle has more information for students looking to participate. I'm Alexis Strickle reporting live from the Campus Center. Tomorrow and Thursday, the Red Cross will be holding a blood drive here on campus open to all students and community members. The blood drive will be held from 11.30 a.m. till 5.30 p.m. And it is open for everyone. All, everyone is welcome, walk-ins are welcome, and no appointment is necessary. The blood drive is actually combined with the Best Buy and everyone donating will be entered in to win one of four home theater packages. All donors will also receive a free t-shirt provided and refreshments will be provided. In order to donate, you must be 17 years of age and weighing 110 pounds. If you need to look up more about your eligibility or for more information, you can email redcross.org or you, at, excuse me, you can email redcross at oswego.org or you can visit their website, redcrossblood.org. It is at Hewitt Union at, from 11.30 to 5.30 tomorrow and Thursday. That's it for me, and we'll give it back to you guys at the studio. On Saturday, December 15th, nearly 550 SUNY Oswego students will be eligible to graduate and many are already working towards their future plans. Broadcasting major Asa Stakel started professionally working as a, quote, one-man band reporter for Seven News in Watertown, where he began working the summer before his senior junior year. He says he worked as a producer's assistant most days, but went out on a couple assignments with reporters. He decided to write a script for one of those assignments, 
gave it to the news director, and was hired a few days later. Stakel was a member of both WTOP and WNYO on campus and says that both shaped him into what he is today. The Del Sart Dance Club will be putting on their biannual recital this Saturday at 7 p.m. and Sunday at 2 p.m. in the Waterman Theater in Tyler Hall. Del Sart is composed of dancers of all abilities and dances and of styles including jazz, tap, ballet, and hip-hop. Tickets are $6 and are available at the Tyler Hall box office. And now we'll see what's going on in sports with Alicia Daddario. Hey guys, Oswego State's Megan Stover and Hayden Ward are on fire. Just one week after both senior forwards were named SUNYAC Basketball Players of the Week, they have now been crowned this week's ECAC Upstate Basketball Players of the Week. This past Friday, Stover led the Lakers to a victory with a career-high 25 points and 12 rebounds against Plattsburgh. Hayden Ward earned the title by being a double-double machine. He averaged 26 points and 10.7 boards per game. His free throw shooting percentage has been nearly flawless at 94.7%. And coming up later, I'll have your sports report on RG3's Monday Night Football debut and which team made a historic fallout of the AP Top 25 poll and some key moves being made during the MLB offseason. Thanks, Alicia. Coming up after the break, we'll have some new information on hydrofracking. And the strikes in, in, in Egypt. How long will these showers be sticking around? Stay tuned to find out. You're watching WTOP 10 at 10. helping you achieve your goals with a customized curriculum developed with flexibility in mind. Take classes year-round, full or part-time in Oswego online or at the Metro Center in downtown Syracuse. More information is available online or by calling 315-312-2911. Capricuzzi scored two goals on Alia Brian Love. And he Joe, Joe, get, get out. Adam, you're in. Lori Korpakovsky scored two goals on Ilya Brzgalov. Got it! Good evening, Oswego, and thank you for tuning in. I'm meteorologist Ryan Farrell here to take a full look at your forecast. Boy, what a day we had today. Our high was 69 degrees, 30 degrees above our average. We smashed the old record set back in 1941 by 7 degrees. Now here are your WTOP weather headlines. We will have rain overnight. In behind that, there's a big cool down coming, and we're going to have some unsettled weather heading in toward the weekend. Now if you're heading outdoors tonight, well, that rain is going to be in our area. We're going to bottom out in the low 30s. Now, here is our current radar. There's a large shield of rain heading over us right now. It's mostly light in nature, but as you can see, there are some yellows embedded within these green showers. That's just indicative of some heavier rain, so we might be seeing that overnight. Now, I'm just going to take a step back. Look how large this whole line of showers is, extending from the northeast all the way down to the Gulf of Mexico. Now this is all due to a large cold front right here indicated by that blue line that's forcing all of those showers toward the east. Now just taking a look at temperatures around the region, the cold front is just starting to make its way into western New York. So they are in the 40s with Jamestown, our cold spot, at 45 degrees. Heading on to the eastern part of the state, New York City at 52, Albany at 55. The same with Glens Falls and 53 in Plattsburgh. 
Now for your Wednesday, that cold front is going to push off to the east. In behind that, we are going to have plenty of cold Canadian air coming down over the lakes. Now, I'm going to time out your day for you on Wednesday at 7 a.m. as you're driving out to work, maybe getting an early start on your class. We will be clear, but as we go on to the afternoon by 1 p.m., we're going to have some snow showers in our region. Now, they're not really going to be heavy. They will be light in nature. A lot of flakes flying around. This is because of the colder air that is going over the warm lakes, producing some lake effect showers. Now, building on later into the day by 7 p.m., maybe you're stepping out for a late movie. We will be clear. Look at that. All that snow has dissipated. dissipated. Maybe a couple flurries lingering in our region. Now, for Wednesday, we're going to top out at 40 degrees. That will be early in the day, though. Temperatures will be dropping, and as I said, we're going to have some afternoon snow showers. Now, your class day forecast. At 8 a.m., you early risers, you're going to see the warmest part of the day. Going throughout the day, we will be dropping into the lower 30s. And again, chance for some showers in the afternoon. Now, your five-day forecast. Thursday is looking like the pick day of the week at 39, mostly sunny skies. Going on to the weekend, though, it looks like another disturbance will come through. That's going to bring some rain showers into our region, but we will be in the 40s. So there's a big change coming up. We had 69 degrees today. It's We're going to be in the so 30s nice tomorrow. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> big difference. I can't believe how nice it was this morning, and then all of a sudden it rains. Yep. See, now I'm a snow lover, so I like <laughs> the end of the forecast when it gets cold. Well, it's <laughs> December. It should be snowing. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it should be. <laughs> but thanks, Ryan. Now we'll take a look at state news. The Independent Democratic Conference and Senate Republicans are joining forces to create a new governing coalition. The plan is for the Senate presidency to rotate every other week between the Senate Majority Leader and the Indep Independence Conference Leader which the Senate Democrats may not see eye to eye on. While there are still two state Senate races yet to be decided, the Republican conference will most likely keep their majority with this change. After hearing from local residents for the past 30 days, the town of Onondaga voted to ban hydrofracking last night. The board members were unanimous in their decision to keep the Syracuse watershed exempt from any drilling. The Atisco Lake Preservation Association was one of the groups that led the fight against hydrofracking in Onondaga. They say it's been a three-year process to s protect their water source. The New York Post is facing a lot of controversy after using a disturbing image on its front page. The image depicts a man frantically reaching for a subway platform as a train bears down on him. Much of the criticism is directed towards the photographer as people wonder why his first instinct was to take a photo rather than helping the individual. The image was taken by a freelance photographer after Kisa Khan was shoved by someone onto the tracks. Han was struck by the train and passed away at a New York hospital. He leaves behind a wife and daughter. After being challenged by one of his Twitter followers, Newark's Mayor Cory Booker of New Jersey will live on food stamps this week. Booker will be living on a food stamp budget of about $30, a similar amount that is provided to people in New Jersey who take part in the Supplemental Nutrition Assistant Program, also known as SNAP. The mayor will be tracking his experience on Twitter using the hashtag SNAPChallenge. Sixty-three police officers and 11 drug traffickers were arrested in Rio de Janeiro. The arrests come after a year-long effort to pinpoint police corruption before the 2014 World Cup and the 2016 Summer Olympics. The efforts have been labeled as Operation Purification and aims to flesh out corruption within the police force. Investigators have been looking into drug dealers paying off officers who, so they could operate without being caught. The individuals arrested were charged with drug, drug tra trafficking, corruption, and kidnapping. Egypt plunged into a deeper state of crisis today after police fired tear gas at citizens protesting against Egyptian President Mohamed Morsi's drive to hold a SNAP referendum on a draft charter. Several protesters broke through police and got close to the presidential palace. The strikes were part of a planned campaign of civil disobedience that could bring in other industries. The strike was aimed at standing up to tyranny in the Egypt media industry. When we come back, we'll have Kevin Carr, but first, here's your late night menu.
program, helping you achieve your goals with a customized curriculum developed with flexibility in mind. Take classes year-round, full or part-time in Oswego online or at the Metro Center in downtown Syracuse. More information is available online or by calling 315-312-2911. Popular car company Suzuki has announced that they will no longer be making cars in the United States. Kevin Carr has more on this story. When it comes to making cars, and it can be even more difficult when it comes to selling them. Unfortunately for automaker Suzuki, selling vehicles in the United States has become quite a burden. So much, in fact, that the brand has recently announced its plans to stop selling its vehicles in America. Suzuki has been selling vehicles in the United States for several years now. And while the brand has had a few respectable vehicles, such as the Kazashi and SX4, Suzuki has only managed to sell 21,000 automobiles in the first 10 months of this year. Behind me is the Grand Vitara, an SUV that Suzuki built for several years in the United States, but given the poor sales numbers, chances are you won't find many Grand Vitaras or other Suzuki vehicles on the roads today. Which raises a question, why has Suzuki been unable to sell enough vehicles to sustain itself in the United States? There are a few reasons, one of them being the lack of variety Suzuki had to choose from, with only five different vehicles in its lineup. Brands that are achieving sales success in America often have a much wider variety. Suzuki's retail system was a failure in accumulating sales. There weren't enough sales for the brand to open more dealerships, but there also weren't enough dealerships to sell more vehicles. There are only 354 of them nationwide. And of course, competition can be pretty tough. Suzuki used to rely on selling its small SUVs like the Samurai, Sidekick, and Vitara. But when Toyota and Honda entered the small SUV segment in the mid-1990s, Suzuki took a hard hit. Other import brands like Kia and Hyundai have managed to make better compact cars than Suzuki, taking sales away from the brand over time. There is some good that can come from all of this, however. Potential buyers may be able to find great deals on new Suzuki vehicles in the near future. This goes for younger buyers as well. Dealers will likely want to lower prices on their inventory to get vehicles off of their lots. Considering Suzuki sells a few affordable compact cars, college students in particular looking for a cheap, efficient vehicle may be able to get a nice buy. Reporting for WTOP, I'm Kevin Carr. While Suzuki, does not plan, while Suzuki does not plan on making cars in the United States anymore, it will still continue to make vehicles in India and Japan as well as other global markets where it does have success. Now, do you know anyone with a Suzuki, Kevin? I don't personally, but <laughs> I know they also make pretty good motorcycles among other uh, products and machines. True. Do you think that could possibly save their sales in the United States, or? Doesn't look like it. I mean, um, as far as automobiles is concerned, they really took a nose dive down. I mean, just barely over 20,000 mm -hmm. sales through 2012 is pretty abysmal for any car company. But fortunately for them, they can still sell pretty well in other global markets. Just America hasn't been so kind, where there's a lot of competition from other import brands as well. Gotcha. What about, what would you s what would your preference be between a Kia and a Suzuki? Oh, definitely the Kia. Kia has come such a long way since it first came here in both quality, affordability, reliability, and price. It's just a lot better than the 
vehicles that Suzuki has to offer, and Kia has many more models to choose from than Suzuki, which only has about five cars that it currently makes, so it doesn't have as good of a selection either. Okay, yeah, that'll do it. <laughs> Thanks, Kevin. Thank you. Snooki's pregnancy was big news too. New the, new the queen of the Jersey Shore has some advice for Duchess Catherine. Elizabeth Clarendon has more in Hollywood Minute. Jersey Shore star and new mom Nicole Snooki Polizzi has some words of wisdom for the Duchess of Cambridge. Snooki tells the New York Daily News Catherine should enjoy her pregnancy and be excited. She says it's hard but says she shouldn't stress out. The 25-year-old reality star welcomed her first child in August. Snooki says Catherine should deal with the paparazzi by enjoying her time at home or in the castle with the baby. Buckingham Palace revealed Monday that Prince William and his wife are expecting. Alec Baldwin won't be done with television after his NBC series 30 Rock wraps up its final season. A spokesperson for the actor confirms he signed a new two-year contract with Universal Television. Under the deal, Baldwin will develop and produce new shows for the studio and possibly star in them. An upcoming film starring Ashton Kutcher as Steve Jobs will close next year's Sundance Film Festival. Sundance just released this photo of Kutcher portraying the Apple founder early in his career. The director of programming for the festival says the film, called Jobs, is inspirational and entertaining. He says Kutcher really owns the role. For Hollywood Minute, I'm Elizabeth Corridor. Ashton Kutcher really looks like Steve Jobs in that picture, it doesn't really, he? It really, it's almost scary. I was surprised when <laughs> I saw it on the line. And now a full look at sports with Alicia Daddario. Welcome back to sports. Rookie quarterback sensation RG3 made his debut on Monday Night Football facing Eli Manning and the defending Super Bowl champs in the, the New York Giants. The Giants played well with this touchdown pass here, a four-yarder to Martellus Bennett, his fourth touchdown of the season. But the Redskins were on top of their game as well. Robert Griffin III fakes the handoff and gets some room to throw to Pierre Garçon for what would be the game-winning scoring drive. RG3 rose to the occasion as he led the Washington to a victory and keeping hopes for a wild card spot alive. Some college hoops news, Coach Calipari's Kentucky Wildcats made history this week, but not the bragging kind. First, the team fell from number three to number eight in the country. But then on Monday, the Wildcats took a plunge out of the AP Top 25 poll altogether. This tragic fall marks the biggest single week drop from the rankings since the NCAA expanded the poll to 25 teams in 1990. Calipari is used to championship status, but losing four players to last year's draft, including the number one pick, Anthony Davis, has proved to be detrimental. Moving on to some off-season baseball news, the Red Sox have been busy ball club as they make some necessary acquisitions. After suffering their worst season since 1965, Monday the Bo Sox signed former Rangers catcher Mike Napoli, and Tuesday they nabbed outfielder Shane Victorino. Both agreed to the same contract of three years, $35 million. Now Josh Hamilton is still a free agent. The slugger has high risk based on his past, but however high rewards and is looking to cash in. It is reported that Hamilton and the Rangers are close to reaching a deal. That's it for sports. Now back over to the news desk. Thanks, Alicia. And when we come back, we'll take a look at the lighter side of news and a final look at your forecast. But first, let's take a look at your community calendar. We have FICO MBA program helping you achieve your goals with a customized curriculum developed with flexibility in mind. Take classes year-round, full or part-time in Oswego online or at the Metro Center in downtown Syracuse. More information is available online or by calling 
here's a dive into the lighter side of news. We've all heard of listening to music or exercising to relieve stress, but students at a college in Canada have a different, more adorable idea in mind as they've opened a puppy room for students during finals week. For, th for three days during finals week, students will be able to spend time with therapeutic dogs and the puppy room has gone viral on social networks. A number of different breeds will be on hand to de-stress tense students. Bessie Cooper, the woman who is listed as the world's oldest person, has died today in a Georgia nursing home at age 116. Cooper died peacefully this afternoon in Monroe, Georgia, the town she moved to in 1917 after World War I, according to her son, Sidney Cooper. She was declared the world's oldest person this past January. She's attributed her longevity to minding her own business and not eating junk food. The title now belongs to 115-year-old Dina Manfredini of Iowa. Some restaurants may not be as sanitary as we'd like to believe. While the location of Boston's new Earl of Sandwich restaurant is ideal, being right in the middle of the Boston Common, where the, fo where the food is prepared may be a turnoff for customers. The stone kiosk where the lunchtime sandwiches will be prepared used to be a public bathroom. The structure was built in the 1920s and was used as a men's comfort station before being closed in the 1970s, having since been closed complete with the old urinals, toilets, and rusty pipes. And now let's take a look, and now let's take a final look at your forecast with meteorologist Ryan Farrell. Ryan? Well, if you like the warmth we had today, you're not going to like the forecast for tomorrow as we plunge into the 30s, actually decreasing in temperature as the day progresses, with the chance for some showers in the afternoon. So this week is really up and down uh, weather-wise in the 60s and the 30s, snow, rain. It's pretty crazy. <coughs> Last winter was like this too, and we ended up getting hardly any snow. Yes. Now, the long-range forecast, although, I mean, you know, the winter forecast, it's, it's a long ways out. They have us in an average winter, mm -hmm. which means more snow than last year because it was so mild. Well, a pretty, pretty average winter for Oswego. That's good. What about rain? Is it going to be kind of a rainy winter or more of a cold no, one? No, because the average uh, for Oswego is right around 31 degrees, and we usually have a good amount of snowfall, as you guys know, yeah. being here. <laughs> um, so it's looking That's like no it should be here. cold yeah. enough for the snow. We shouldn't have too much rain uh, deep into the winter, at least. I'm a sophomore, so last year during my freshman year, we <laughs> didn't get any snow. So you don't even so know. I have oh, yeah, you'll, you'll see it soon winter. enough. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. I'm from Syracuse, so I'm used to it. And I was, I was happy last year, but I missed the snow. Like you said, you're a snow guy. Yeah, snow I, girl, I did not like last winter. Love the snow. Oh, Born and raised in Buffalo, so I'm used to it as well. <laughs> Just love it. How about those puppies? That is <laughs> so a great, cute. I wish I had that here at our school, Actually, too. Actually, I miss my dog. Hall. Did they really? Yeah, I didn't get to go to it, but I mean, I love puppies. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely a good therapy, I think, because it gets your mind Definitely. off of finals, which are next week. And that would do it for us here at WTOP 10 News. For the 10 News team, I'm Alicia D'Addario. I'm Ryan Farrell. I'm Heather Casey. And I'm Travis Clark. Have a great night, and we'll see you tomorrow.